people who think I'm going to get up and I'm going to go for my morning run or I'm going to go to the gym. I'm not going to have breakfast because then I'm going to be burning my calories and I'm going to lose my weight quicker because I'm not going to be burning off my breakfast, basically. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I get this question all the time. And I mean, I'm notorious for bashing fasting. Um, when we look at it, I'm a physiologist. So I look at brain signaling and how we have areas of appetite control, endocrine control, and part of that also is thyroid, as well as as how our body responds to fueling. So if someone is going to get up and do a workout session, someone being female, because men, completely different story here. For thinking about women getting up and doing a training session fasted, they are, I pretty much say, well, why did you do that? You should have just stayed in bed. That would have been better for your body composition. Because when we're looking at fasting and we're trying to hit intensities, we know that a half an hour after you wake up, you have a peak in cortisol. And exercise also increases cortisol because just like your heart rate goes up, cortisol goes up. And when you have that elevation of cortisol, your brain's getting a lot of signals of, okay, I need to break things down. So you're breaking down primarily lean mass and, and fat and a little bit of carbohydrate to fuel. But the signaling goes further than that because you're trying to do an exercise stress or really strong external stress on the body without nutrition. And the brain's like, hey, where's the nutrition? Where is the nutrition density? And in the women, in women's brains, we have a higher density of what we call kispeptin and kispeptin neurons. And they're very sensitive to calorie intake and, as well as stress. So it's, it controls our endocrine system. It controls our appetite hormones. So if we go into exercise fasted, we start to have this dysregulation of our endocrine system. So, you know, four days of faster workouts, we start to have a drop in our thyroid function. And it feeds forward to a dysregulation of our daily hormone pulses, which is really important for endocrine function. We know from the research that if women have just a little bit of protein and carbohydrate before their training, then they actually end up with better outcomes of the exercise. So they're able to hit higher stress loads. But post-exercise, they have a greater increase in what we call the EPOC or your excessive post-oxygen consumption. In general layperson terms, that's elevated metabolism, which people are like, I want my metabolism to be up. Um, but also by having food afterwards as well, we're telling the hypothalamus, yep, we can drop cortisol. We can start building that lean mass and we can use more body fat as a resting fuel. When we see it in men, it's a different story. And that has to do with differences in muscle morphology. They have more glycolytic fibers, less oxidative. Um, they also have a lower th threshold that they're able to sustain with lower calorie intake. So when we see fasted data, it, it works well because it does really work well in men. But when we translate it and see what's happening in women, it's a completely different story. When you say, okay, if you eat before and you eat after, probably quite a lot of women, there'll be alarm bells going off in their mind thinking, I cannot possibly do that. I'm trying to lose weight. What is the point of even working out then? But when you say eat beforehand, is it a significant breakfast or does it literally, could it just be like a banana? It could be just a banana. It doesn't have to be a significant amount of food. We look at um, some of the work that Abby Smith Ryan's done at, at University of North Carolina, and it ends up being 30 grams of carbohydrate, which is really tiny amount, and 10 to 15 grams of protein. So it could be a banana with some nut butter. It could be protein fortified coffee. It doesn't have to be a lot. Post exercise, you want to get you know a good hit of protein in, but again, you could have your breakfast there or split your breakfast if you're not that hungry. Um, and the other thing that people forget, it's you're not losing weight during exercise, you're creating the stress. So you want to be able to create as much stress for an adaptive response that you can during exercise. And if you're not fueling for it, then you're not hitting the intensities and you're not maximizing the type of stress you can put on your body. So it actually slows the rate of weight loss down and slows the rate of adaptation down. What we want to think about is I want to fuel for the stress at hand. And then in the evening, I'm going to take away maybe 150 to 200 calories as my calorie deficit. And this works so much better with our chronobiology, but also for that brain signaling to be able to drop body fat, drop the cereal fat, increase lean mass, and to get the benefits of exercise that we all talk about. And are you in favor of calorie counting as a personal level? No. Not at all. 
I know. Um, Because there's a big debate of calories in, calories out, but it's a misconception of an algorithm because the types of calories you're, that are coming in is more important when we talk about nutrient density. And yes, people say, well, it's an equal, it's an energetic question, right? So if you need 3,000 calories to exist and you take in 2,500, then that's a 500 calorie deficit. Of course, you're going to lose weight. If you're a man, sure, we can look at it that way. But when we look at women, because there's different thresholds for signaling and maintaining our weight or losing weight and metabolic thresholds, it doesn't work the same. So we have to look at how we are fueling for the stress during the day. That's exercise stress. That's the allostatic load of, you know, what life stress is. Because if we start working with our circadian rhythm and fueling when we need to, then we keep our endocrine system in check. And so that means that we have better thyroid function. We have better responses to overall stress. And our body isn't in that tired but wired sympathetic driven state so that we can actually have this polarization of our autonomic nervous system, which then allows the body to get more into a relaxed state at times when it needs to, but also really turn on when it needs to. And this overall helps with that weight loss. Because it's so complex when you talk about weight loss, it's not just, as you say, calories in, calories out. It's very different for women. And yeah, I, I love even going back to our, our earlier topic was sleep. Just first thing to sort is sleep. And that's something that people would kind of think is like stage four. Like firstly, I need yeah. to sort my exercise, my movement, even stress, I feel would come before sleep. And, you know, my food, what nutrition I'm having, and then they'd think of sleep. 